Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. Uh, first off, I'm testing a new microphone out today. It's not my permanent one. Uh, it's a big shout out to my nephew, Brandon Ellis, who's uh, kind of loaned me slash given me this microphone. So if you're watching this, then uh, at least it, I'm getting some kind of sound from it. Right, today's video um, is all about these things with these things. Now, mobile phones are becoming quite popular with uh, using with your telescopes. And rightly so, I mean, there's a lot of good apps out there. Uh, but what this video is more important for is, uh, well, the, is if you use one of these to set your telescope up. Now, I'll explain more in, in, in a short while. But what you may have found is you, you may have heard of these apps that um, claim to be like a go-to system, if you like. You download the uh, app, or you install the app, should I say, and uh, you've got a little arrow, you, you, you mount it to your telescope, and it works with your um, GPS location, and uh, you, you, you input a target, and a little arrow will point you in the direction of where you need to take your telescope, and once you find it, once you're nearby, it'll start flashing, and saying, right, there's the target, it should be in your eyepiece. Now, of course, this is never really the case, and uh, even when these things are working 100% uh, to the best, they're never that accurate, and they never will be as good as a go-to system. They just work on a completely different system altogether. Now, so why am I talking about all this? Well, you may have found that the that not only don't these kind of apps work, but they can be an absolute mile out <laughs> in certain cases. You know, you could say, oh, let's find the moon. And it's saying, point your telescope there. You know, for a well, for, for, well, that the moon's there. You know, you could think, how can this app be so wrong? Well, it may not be the app. What could be happening is you are getting an, um, a magnetic force, a, a force that's coming in and interfering with the sensors on these cameras. And where that's coming from is your telescope. Now, this is a little talked about subject, and uh, I don't think a lot of people are actually aware of it. Now, what happens over time? Some telescopes, now not all telescopes, this happens to, and I'll show you ways you can actually check this out and, um, you know, check your telescope, see if it's uh, magnetic. Um, and I think it's just general. I mean, I'm not a science of metals and magnetism, so I, I don't know exactly know what happens. But I know with metals uh, rubbing to gear systems, rubbing together and things like that, they can eventually get slightly magnetic. Another cause is if you've ever used uh, magnetic holders on your telescope to maybe old hand controllers or something on there, uh, that will, of course, leave a little bit of magnetism behind. This is all it needs to really play havoc with the sensors in your phone. Now, all right, fair enough, with go-to type of apps, we all know they're just a bit of fun and not to be taken seriously. But if you're using um, an equatorial mount such as this, and you're relying on one of these for polar alignment, and you're using your compass through your phone, again, this is going to give you a total false reading if there's any amount of magnetic uh, force coming out of your telescope. Now, this is not only going to affect your um, phone compass, the sensors in that, but just a simple, um, just a simple analog compass like this, it will affect it. Now, how do you test if you telescopes magnetic and be playing havoc because i'll tell you when it comes to polar alignment a lot of people will fix a little compass like this somewhere on the mount um it's quite common practice and a sensible thing to do but it could after all this time be give, giving them the issues where you know they just don't feel like the uh, eq's working properly it's not tracking stars properly you know this is especially common in beginners and it's simply that you're probably not pointing anywhere near north because you're getting a false compass reading. Now, the way to test this, you can actually just test it with a compass. And if you were to uh, hold a compass and add the, 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 the needle so it's nice and steady, and I'll show you a little bit more closer in a minute with exactly how bad my telescope is. 
Uh, but anyway, if you hold the compass, just an analog compass like this, and bring it towards the telescope, if it starts doing strange things like uh, irregular spikes or even spinning round, you know you've got a bit of a problem, and it is in fact um, the, the, uh, some kind of magnetism coming from your telescope. Now, there's a little more in-depth and a, a slightly better way to do this, and that is using the compass on your phone. The one that's already on, like installed onto your phone, your digital compass. You can do this exactly the same. Come away from your telescope, get the compass so it's nice and steady, and start walking towards your telescope. Again, if the compass starts spinning round, you know you're going to have, well, it doesn't have to spin round, but sometimes the, it could just move like five, six, seven, even 15 degrees off north or wherever you may be pointed. That's a lot. I mean, five degrees is a lot to be, you know, when you're trying to get somewhere near the North, North Star. I mean, I'm not talking about precise polar alignment here or when you can actually see the North Star. Because such as in my, my case, I can't see the, the North Star. So I have to do rough polar alignment. And there's a few of us that are like me to do this. And this is fine for just general, <coughs> excuse me, visual astronomy. And if you've got one of these installed onto your telescope and uh, you think you're pointing north, when well, actually, just double check. Make sure that you haven't got this magnetic telescope behavior going on. Now, for a more detailed reading of how uh, magnetic your telescope has become, you can download a free app from both uh, app stores, uh, iOS or Android. And uh, you want to be looking for EMF, e, sorry, E. M F meter or detector. Now this usually comes under the ghost sections, uh, but don't worry. You just want to see simple um, EM EMF uh, reader uh, or meter. Uh, ignore the ghost side of things. It do all it does is it works off the sensors of your phone, and it works exactly the same. And you'll know it's working because uh, as long as your uh, your phone's compatible. Uh, if you bring uh, like a, even just a weak magnet, magnetic force near your phone, you'll see the reading going up. Um, when you open the apps, like I said, they are free. They're easy to use. They'll look something like this. You may have the old analog needle there. It'll show you. And as you can see, there's a, uh, some numbers flashing up. I hope that the camera's picking it up. Now, I'll just show you an example of how bad my telescope is. Um, if I start bringing it towards the telescope, you can see that, if I move that out of the way, it's just kind of gone off the charts there. We're well over 100. Uh, of 200, <laughs> 256, dropping back down to 170. Now, that is pretty much everywhere all over my telescope. It's around the mount. It's around the tray. It's just everywhere. So as you can see, using any compass near my telescope or any kind of these um, apps that so-called find you things, uh, anywhere near this that work on the sense of my phone are pretty useless. And uh, this could, uh, just this simple bit of knowledge could be the answer to a lot of frustration you may have been having uh, with either uh, setting your, getting the note, uh, getting your, telescope pointed north spit it out jason <laughs> or in fact just using the so-called go-to apps so like i say folks this is just more of an awareness video something that uh, you probably won't be aware of because like i say i don't think a lot of people are aware that their uh, telescope is uh, slightly magnetic and seeing as there's so many uh, things related to astronomy that uses the sensors on our phones um, it could be the, like I say, it could be the reason why I've been uh, slightly frustrated while using a phone near a telescope. So definitely have a look at that EMF reader. And uh, if worse comes to worse, and you do really want to play with one of these go-to uh, apps, is to find out, and if you de install something like the EMF detector, and find you may have got some kind of dead spot or low reading. Uh, of uh, electromagnetic field on a certain point of your telescope so at least you know where to place your phone for a more accurate reading if you're using one of these apps well there you go folks another video all wrapped up thank you so much for watching i hope it sounds all right if it's made it out to you and you're watching it now then at least uh, we've got some kind of sound going off another big thank you to brandon ellis my nephew 
to, for the loan of this microphone. Don't forget, guys, if you like the video, give me that big thumbs up. Just take a second out, hit the like. It really does help the channel. And make sure you've got notifications turned on, all notifications. I am doing uh, quite a few lives uh, these days. Ooh, a bit daring, I know. Uh, but I'm enjoying it, and it's a bit of fun. So uh, you, you, I don't know when the next live is going to be. I'm not quite sure when the next upload will be. I never try and leave it too long between each upload. But just make sure you've got that bell turned on so you don't miss the next one. Until the next one, folks, take good care of yourselves. Bye for now.